welcome to this first round of the negotiations of the Copenhagen Competition 2014. How does a university student learn to negotiate and collaborate? We do have other solutions, and we believe that such a solution should be, of course... And what's it like for a budding negotiator to try to interact with the best and the brightest from around the globe? We're getting so many experience from all around the world, and we're getting so many di different friends. It was very exciting to finally be here after a year of preparations and to finally meet all the other delegations. I think it's very useful for everyone to meet people, to hear them, to talk to them, and to make new friends. Welcome to the Faculty of Law at the University of Copenhagen. In the Danish capital, students from prestigious universities in Singapore, Australia, Israel, Ethiopia, South Africa, Spain and Denmark are engaged in the Copenhagen competition. Now this runs contrary to our views regarding the life cycle analysis. The objective? To negotiate a new multilateral treaty. You'd like more information. That's the way I, I read you. Thank you. The negotiation competition is interdisciplinary, letting law students collaborate with students from hard sciences. It mirrors real-world negotiations with each delegation trying to set its own agenda. What we are saying is that liquid hydrogen is the means with which we transport the hydrogen energy produced sustainably from solar fuels. But it's much more than that to the attending students. This competition is very relevant and it feeds exactly to where I want to be five, ten years from now. Getting to know how people think in different societies, it would be very useful because I would understand how, what sort of global impact um, the things I studied back in school might possibly have. I think really it's just one of the experiences that you can add to any CV really and you know show I have done something that's international, that's challenging and that's very current and very important. The question came up that um, was how do we engage all students at university. The competition is always linked to a parallel scientific event, providing the students with a unique possibility to attend and maybe even play a part in the scientific program, hereby allowing them to meet and be inspired by top scientists. These students get back to me and my colleagues and, and tell us these stories that this actually opened their eyes for exactly how they could use their, their studies, how they could transform their career. They might network and, and meet the future um, employer in, in events like this. And the quality of the students doesn't fail to impress the three international judges, among them a former deputy director general of the World Trade Organization. I'm, I'm very impressed uh, and I take home both a sense of admiration and a sense of contentment. In some sense they are playing a game, but when you look deeper into what they are doing, it's more than a mere game for them. It becomes an issue which they start associating with. But even though all seven teams make an impression, there can only be one winner announced by the Danish Prime Minister. The winner of the Copenhagen competition 2014 is the Australian National University. It really was my, the best experience I've had throughout my law degree for two reasons, I think. Um, the fact that we got to participate in such an interdisciplinary competition, but mainly because of the other delegates we met. So I think both of those aspects complementing each other was, was really a very special um, experience. The University of Copenhagen aspires to making students and decision makers meet through the competition. This allows students to introduce their ideas and in return gain insight into what their future career may look like. They are the future leaders, uh, the leaders of tomorrow and uh, what, they, what they seem to have experienced perhaps we can learn from that as well.